I have a question for you. Out of all the prosecutions furthered by the police each year, how many of them do you think are malicious? By that, I mean motivated not by the urge to see justice done, but rather due to the officer's vindictive spite toward the alleged perpetrator, or in some cases, toward a totally innocent member of the public the officer has taken a dislike to. 10%, 25%, 50%, the truth is, nobody knows, but it's a very real problem brought on by the fact that nobody oversees police-led prosecutions except for the police themselves. And don't make the mistake of thinking the CPS, or their counterpart in Scotland, the COPFS, have the least interest in monitoring police-led cases, because they don't. For a large percentage of petty offences, the police don't have to refer to the Crown Prosecution Service at all. And often, the first a CPS lawyer will know that a defendant has been stitched up with a malicious charge is the day they turn up in court to prosecute it. Police officers levelling malicious charges against a person who's done no wrong is a very real epidemic. And as Boris Johnson waves through another 20,000 psychologically unevaluated individuals into police uniform, it's only going to get worse. Take, for instance, the store manager of a sports direct in Avon and Somerset. When he refused to sell an item of lost property to a police officer, the officer instantly threatened him with arrest. When that failed, he marched back to the station and fitted the manager up with phony charges of theft and threatening violence. If the CCTV hadn't been available, the officer would have succeeded. No doubt where he and his fellow officers have succeeded countless times in the past. Malicious prosecution certainly seems par for the course in Avon and Somerset, because in March this year, another officer from that force was sacked following a road rage incident with a driving instructor. PC Keith James maliciously prosecuted the driver for careless driving, despite the fact it was him that caused the incident. Of course, the first anyone discovered that PC James was a liar was after the innocent driver had endured a trial at court, because nobody pays the least attention to police-led prosecutions even when the sole witness and alleged victim is a police officer. And police officer as alleged victim is an offence given priority above all others. The police know this. They know that nobody's watching, so why not dip into the till of malicious prosecution whenever it takes their fancy? I covered this subject in detail in this video. I've linked to it at the end of this one because you're guaranteed to get a good laugh at what qualifications cops are expected to have before they can take on the role of prosecutor. At least in this country, if you're subjected to a malicious prosecution at the hands of a vindictive cop, you could in turn bring a private prosecution against them for misconduct in public office. But what happens if you live in Scotland? In Scotland, the public have no such right to bring prosecutions of their own and are thrown entirely at the mercy of the police and the state prosecutor to do it for them. This might explain why officers there are equally as cocky, bullish, moronic and vindictive as those in this country, as the following clip demonstrates. The man filming this entered this petrol station and then began fishing out his mask. At the same moment, this officer swept past, bellowing into his ear to put it on. He then unashamedly marched to the front of the queue a privilege reserved for the police, so they can rush back to their priority tasks of doing nothing. I get your PC number? Yep. T124. PC Milne, that's the National Motorcycle Unit. So. That's fine. So I've just had this officer shout at me from across the, the garage. No address, no polite. Greeting nothing. Yeah, you're just harassing me. Are you explaining why I'm shouting at all in the studio? Are you, or are you just going to berate me? No, no, well? no. You shouted at me for a mask, yeah, which I had in my pocket. Yeah, you were in the shop already, sir. No, I was at the doorway you were in the shop. Of the shop. Already, sir. I was at the doorway of the shop. Just a second. Feel free to see, video. See, when you address the public, it's excuse me, sir. Okay. Sometimes, sir, if you're having to deal with numerous people and, and you, you don't have the time to have you No, no, you have the time to be courteous. You're already in, sir. You have the time to Speaking be courteous. Excuse, Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to get and past you. No, no, you've just walked up and and went against social distancing. Why well, is against social distancing? PCT. It's T132. T132. He just came up. Obvious signage on the floor for social distancing. Now, if you or I had marched deliberately at a police officer like this, refusing to follow the proper exit arrows, 
then I guarantee you would have been leapt on and prosecuted for assault. Seems to me that this second officer didn't even realise the disagreement was being filmed while his back was turned, and only at the last moment did he decide not to lay hands on this man. Yet another reason why you should always record the police. Number, th number three, please. Just sat me in your machine, please. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, I've got my own bank in here. Thanks. You got your driving license on yourself? I need to show you my driving yes, license. Yes, under Section 170 of the Road Traffic Act 1988, you need to provide me with your driving license. No, Section 170 is a duty to report an accident. Section 164 is the duty to show a driving license. And the Road Traffic Act 1988 covers England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. For what reason? Because you've committed a moving road traffic offence. What traffic offence would that be? The section uh, of the Road Traffic Regulations Act that means that you have to have. Sorry, what was that? Section uh, of the road traffic regulations. Are section uh, of the road traffic regulations. Where's section uh, of the road traffic regulations? Oh, here it is. Section uh. In the event a police officer is too stupid to be able to remember what law he is maliciously enforcing, that provision shall be known as section uh. That means that you have to have number plates properly fitted to your car. There according is number plates properly According fitted. to BS standard 145 Delta. So he can't cite the correct section of the Road Traffic Act that compels a driver to show his licence, but he knows by rote the correct British standards number that defines number plate construction. That says everything that needs to be said about this officer. Right, there is number plates fine. Not according to the correct standard for this car. So it's guidance, isn't it? Well, it's not against the law. It is against the law. It isn't it against is. the law, and you know it's not against Sir, the law. Sir, if you didn't provide your Why details... Why are you getting closer to me? I'm going to ask you to maintain social distancing. I am two metres away from you. Please go back to where you were. I'm going to ask you for your driving licence. Now he's raising his voice, guys. Because you're not listening I've to me. I've asked you to maintain social distance, and you're getting closer and closer to me for no reason. No, now, what is more me, important, me contracting or you contracting a virus, then a registration. I would like you to make two metres back right now, please. You're in my personal space. It's two metres distance in, OK? As per government guidelines, just like well, those registration to do, sir, plates. Well, listening to me. No, you're listening to me. No, you're listening to me. No, I didn't need to listen oh, to you. You I... work for me. Oh, I work for you. You work for me. Well, I'm going to do the best job I possibly can. Now, That's right great. now, you've got sunglasses. Why are you raising you're your gonna, voice? Because you're not listening to what I'm saying. I have to be listening. Uh, no, voice to be heard. listen, you do not need to raise your voice, OK? Right, sir, I'm going to ask you one last time to provide your details of your driving licence under Section 170 of the road. I'll give you my driving licence. That's fine. I'm going to ask you to you step back two metres. I'm going to ask you to step back two metres. Until you respect my distance, and there it is. Another member of the public tossed onto the scrap heap of contempt the police are building in their honour. What I want to know is this. When this officer is sat around his equally inbred relatives, boasting about what a macho hero he is, does he say things like, I called it a guy in a petrol forecourt the other day, and you know what for? Having incorrectly spaced number plates that don't conform with British standards 145 Delta. What do you think?